Hello again, everybody. This is Craig Evans of Autism Hangout, and thank you for tuning into this installment of the Autism Hangout feature program series, Autism in the Workplace, Job Success. I'm delighted to add entries to this category, and today's guest is one of the best ones that I've been able to add so far. With us today is Chef Tom Dickinson. Now, Tom is on the spectrum, and it lends him great credibility in his career pursuits. Tom is not only an educated expert in his trade, which is cooking food, he started a company that's dedicated to gluten-free, casein-free cooking, and is now publishing cookbooks about food as a tool. So he's given back. Autism Hangout, please welcome today's guest, the founder of GFCF Fusion, Chef Tom Dickinson. Welcome, Tom. It's awful nice to have you here. Greg, it's a pleasure to be here, and I'm always glad to uh, give some information and give back. I know. <laughs> That's part of the reason I'm so excited with you achieving job success. Autism has made you an expert in this field, and you have figured out how to communicate this into a good, productive business for you. But I'm getting ahead of the story here. Let's start off with your story. Tell me about your autism and how you got into cooking. Um, actually, I have, didn't find out until I was an adult about three years ago. I was working at Arco Arena in Sacramento. I was actually working a Kings Sacramento Kings basketball season. And things just didn't connect very well when I was working. It was a high-pressure environment. And there were simple tasks that my chefs, I worked for some great chefs named uh, Gary Ganey and Trivial Flores, great chefs. And they are just asking me to do simple tasks, and I had struggled performing them, and it really was very frustrating. I had known that when I was a kid, I was diagnosed with what they like to call a perceptual problem, and it was autism wasn't a very big thing in the 80s, uh -huh. so I actually did some research. I looked it up in some books. I looked up the testing, and it just it mirrored the testing perfectly that I had had as a child, uh -huh. and I discovered, wow, I'm a high-functioning autistic with Asperger's. And I've, after I found that out, it was a little bit heartbreaking for me because I've always wanted to think, I just want to be normal like everybody else. But sure. you know what? And it was a really rough time, but my wife said to me, she said, Babe, don't be sad about this. Let's find a way to fight it and let's find a way to deal with it. And I did. I changed my diet. I got on some natural supplements and it's helped a great deal. Mm -hmm. I'm currently in a new job right now and... My bosses right now have been really awesome. I've been able to do a really good job with them, and they've been really supportive, and I actually mentioned them in my book. Excellent. So they've been really supportive, and it's been really great. Have you always had an interest in food? When did food start to turn you on? Um, probably when I was about seven years old. And my first dish I ever made was I took Pillsbury biscuit dough, uh -huh. tomato sauce, hot dogs, and cheese, and I made pizzas. I was about seven or eight years old. And the really great thing was, is I was at my dad's college graduation. He was 59 years old, just went back to school, and I watched him graduate in his cap and gown and walk across the the podium. And he said, "Well, if I can do this at 59, what's what's your what's your excuse?" <laughs> and I looked through the the pamphlet at the college, and I saw culinary arts, and I've always kind of liked cooking. And what was great is. In 2002, I watched my dad in his cap and gown, and I sat in the audience while he walked across the stage. In 2005, my dad was the one sitting in the audience watching me walk across the stage to get my degree. Oh my gosh, you went back to school right away then. Yes, I did. Okay, now I know that you have a particular focus on gluten-free, casein-free stuff, but you also have coined this term, food is a tool. What does that mean? Food is a tool that can help people come together. I mean, there's one chef out there that I really admire. His name is Jeff Henderson, and he actually has used food as a tool to get kids off the street and to rehabilitate ex-convicts, and that really inspired me. And this is a tool to get people in the kitchen, you know, back around the family table. And if you have a few kids who are GFCF, that's mm -hmm. no excuse because there's so many great ingredients out there. I'm a firm believer when it comes to GFC cooking, it's not about sacrificing. It's just about replacing. Mm -hmm. Replacing the ingredients with ones you have. Everybody says that French cuisine was built on cream and butter. Well, my cuisine is built on mimic cream and vegan earth balance bread. I mean, that's just the way it is. There's so many different ingredients out there. And it's a tool to... 
get people to cook great food, and you can actually get your kids in there to help you cook as well. I mean, I have a recipe for chicken nuggets that involves using rice checks. I mean, what better way to get a child in there than to put the rice checks in a bag, put them on the table, and say, okay, son, or hello, okay, sweetheart, pound the crap out of those things, and we can make some uh, chicken nuggets together. <laughs> That's interactivity. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, I'm a firm believer in that. I love to cook. I actually have a nephew named Tyler. He wants to go to school to be a chef. You know, I have 13 nieces and nephews, and cooking with kids is awesome. Okay, well, tell us about your book. What What is the title of your book, and then tell us about it. I actually have a copy here with me. Okay. I can put it up here. This is my book. Um, this is Where There's a Meal, There's a Way. And it's available on gfcfusion.webs.com for $15 plus $6 shipping and handling. Okay. And my book is basically, it's about comfort food. It's about, you know, I've seen so many cookbooks where they make everything really, really fancy. And it's really, I think it's kind of intimidating. Mm-hmm. My book is not like that. I played out my food really nice, but it's it's not intimidating food. It's simple cooking just by replacing ingredients. It's shepherd's pie. It's spaghetti and meatballs. It's mm-hmm. country fried steak. It's stir fry. It's um, soup. It's salads. It's um, I have a couple desserts in there as well. It's just simple, rustic, family-style food that people love. I mean, I have recipes in there for corn dog. You're making me hungry just listening to your list. Okay, so it's gluten-free, casein-free. It's a tool because it's going to help change behavior. Now the real test comes down in, what about taste? I have tested every single recipe, and I've tasted them, and I've adjusted the seasoning. You know, simple salt and pepper makes a world of good. You know, I have a recipe for a stir-fry. Instead of soy sauce, I've used coconut aminos, which is soy-free and gluten-free as well. And... It's, it's made a wonder. I've just tested and I've been had to kind of play mad scientist and everything tastes really well. It's, it's, it's seasoned properly as long as everything's within the regulations and just I've become a label reader. I know one of your jobs is that you work at a retirement community. I'm just yeah. curious, do you, are you able to use some of their, your recipes in this retirement community for their opinions? Um, yes, actually I have before. Um, I had a client there, we had a guest there who was actually on a gluten-free diet, and I was able to use a lot of her recipes. We actually used one recipe we used to do for, we used to do chicken soft tacos with refried black-eyed peas. Wow. And somebody actually asked me one time, now do you use the black-eyed peas in order to, because there's something in there that people with gluten intolerance can't have? I said, no way. We didn't have any beans at the time. We, all we had was black-eyed peas. We put it together, and it tasted really good. <laughs> Well, where there's a meal, there's a way. I like that. That's what exactly. It's, it's, it's not just the name of a book. It's my <laughs> philosophy. People tell me, oh, you can't make this. One time we did crab cakes at work, and the lady who was there, she wanted a crab cake. And I told her, if you, she wants a gluten-free crab cake, I'll make her one. And they're like, you can't make a gluten-free crab cake. I'm like, where there's a meal, there's a way. And they said, okay, she wants one. I grabbed some gluten-free bread, chopped it up in the food processor, one egg yolk, some mayonnaise, some ginger, garlic, green onions, Seared it, finished in the oven, 10 minutes later, I had a gluten-free crab cake in my hands. Obviously, you like a challenge. Well, you succeeded in the workplace. You succeeded in education. You succeeded in life. You have a wife and a family. What is your goal at this point in time? Where, where are you going with all this, Tom? My goal is, Craig, that I want to redefine... Right now, GSCF is considered a diet. I mean, I remember a time that there was a vegan diet and there was a vegetarian diet but you don't hear that anymore Mm -hmm. now it's vegan cuisine and now it's vegetarian cuisine i want to redefine this diet i want it to be known as gfcf cuisine i mean the autism community is its own community let's have our own cuisine (laughs) that's that's where i want to go with this i want to redefine this food as a cuisine Mm -hmm. as a separate entity. That's why I named my company GFCF Fusion. It's the name of my cuisine. So we step away from the niche and we step into a a genre, a genre of food. I think that is just an admirable goal. And you know what? If there's anybody that's going to do it, you've got the wherewithal to be able to do it. I am just delighted to hear your story today, Tom. This is just so inspiring. Well, thank you very much. I'll I'll tell you right now, Craig, I'm crazy. I believe, you know, I believe that I can do this. If you believe enough, 
you can actually do it. Uh, and, I, and I don't believe you're crazy. I do believe you're dedicated, and I would vote that you are going to succeed in what you're doing. One more time, can you give me the URL where people can go to find your book? Okay, the website people can find my book is gfcffusion.webs.com. I have a store there. My book is available there. It's $15. It's very affordable, plus $6 in shipping and handling. And if you buy a book, $1 of your purchase will go to the Otspot Foundation, which actually supports low-income families to get autistic kids the therapies that they need. One more example of you giving back. I, I laud you, I commend you, and I thank you for coming on today with this wonderful story, Tom. Oh, thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Good luck to you, and thank you, Autism Hangout. I'll be back again soon, hopefully with another inspirational story such as this on success in the workplace with autism.